Hey everybody, it's Stuart Smith at smallcapvoice.com and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but we're already wrapping up the month of October. We're wrapping up the year 2024, but there's still a lot of time left in this year. We've had a good year in the markets all the way around. It's been up and down, but boy, there's been some big ones that we've talked about, of course, NVIDIA. Uh, you know, it's going to be the year of NVIDIA. It's going to be the year of AI and semiconductor chips. That's for sure. We've got AMD earnings coming out. Uh, uh, let's see, later today, we are taping here October 29th, but we want to talk to you about a little bit of what's going on here at Small Cap Voice for November 2024. I mentioned a couple of new clients, ticker symbol S-O-N-G, ticker symbol G-O-G-Y. Kevin, let me kick it to you on song first, pro music rights, your thoughts, your take so far. I know we've only been in this for hours, not days, but <laughs> yeah, a few days, I'll put it that way. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be upfront. It is it is a very fun client to work with. I love working with with Song, uh, especially getting to know some of the former shareholders, some of the existing shareholders, and kind of just talking about this company. It's a really unique business model, and I think that a lot of what happened in the past is something that we can really work with. I mean, this small cap voice, we're investor relations, we're corporate communications. You know, we're not a legal entity or anything like that. Our job is to come in here and to really work with this company work with song into helping them tell the right story so that way investors are kind of armed with the right information making their own decisions there and so that's what i love about song it's i mean you Stuart, you and i both have a music background you obviously you perform music i i worked more as the uh the back end roadie guy working in the video lighting world with everything but it's a fun industry it's music i mean what who name one person who doesn't like music you know I, i've never met one but it's a great company and the business model is what really excites me about song it's too well, let me jump in too. Yeah, go ahead. Let me jump in too and just say everybody is validated. You're right. We are corporate communication shareholder services. Some of the folks that we've been dealing with are admittedly no longer shareholders in the company. I have been in this space, the small and micro cap space, for 25 years. I can't count how many times I have been reversed out of a deal. So I know that pain. In other words, I worked six months for the deal. The shares were locked up for six months. The company did a financing. By the time I was able to unlock my shares, the value was zero. And so I got paid nothing for those six months. I can relate. I feel the pain. I understand. However, with that being said, we were brought in by somebody who wanted to make moves, wanted to clear the air, if you will. There's already been, as you mentioned, we're not attorneys, but there's been lawsuits dropped. There's been social media opened back up, if you will, with mm -hmm. a lot of unblocking and things like that. So we are working through this. Admittedly, as you just said, we don't know everything about it. We're here to listen. We're here to learn. We're here to then pass along. But we are all ears. And I think we've been very transparent on social media as well. But let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about a longtime client that, look, they're not a full service client with us, but we sure do like Chris Jackson, CEO of Cyberlock. Oh, yeah. And I know they're on board with us for just a little bit of social media. Uh, we did wrap up a video series with them throughout 2024. And I know they're getting very close per their last video. What's your take on that? You know, from the being the social media guy, I'll say that's a fun one to watch because they're growing fast. Um, it's it's their Twitter handle kind of woke up in the past month or two here. Um, and the Twitter handle has increased by, I think, 50 percent in terms of following count. So it's not that that much. I mean, we're, we're only talking hundreds of followers here. But at the same time, in the publicly traded space, especially in the OTC market, that excites me because a lot of times these companies kind of die out on social media. They're unable to get it. They're unable to make it happen. Cyberlock, we're starting to just really have success finding an audience for them, which is an exciting time when you're at this stage where, I mean, Chris Jackson says that almost every single interview, they're coming to market soon. You know, they have a viable product. They have customers that are starting to, to come over the fence here. Um, and I think he even said on the last interview, we're doing a live demo. And so we're actually going to get to see what the, the Cyberlock secure technology looks like and why it's starting to turn heads at all these organizations and companies. So I love Chris. He's, he's an awesome guy. Every single time we have him on the show, I learned something new about the cybersecurity world too and how that technology works. And so I, I'm really impressed with it and I'm really excited to see what he's able to do. But I, I do want to say that you had the cooler event this uh, this past week. And I didn't mean the, the ticker symbol cooler. I meant the cooler of the two things that were happening yeah. here. But ironically, that is all also the cooler open house. So I want to hear what happened at the open house. Cause we've like, I've seen, I've seen two pictures from you on the open house. 
Yeah, there's a ton of content coming. I know they had a camera crew. They had a video crew. They had a lot of guest speakers. I'm here in Austin, Texas. I made my way down to Houston, Texas, got in the car at four in the morning, got home at uh, 9 p.m. It was a long day. It was beautifully done by the company. And boy, I tell you what, one of the things that struck me is it, one of our people that work inside the company whispered in my ear as we were doing the tour. Now you see where the money is going, right? This is a company that has vertically integrated in such a quick turnaround. I mean, they are able to create these batteries with thermal propagation. That means they are a safer battery, probably the safest battery, but I can't make that claim yet. But I know that's something that they wanna do. They do the testing of other people's batteries, telling them, hey, it's efficient here, it's dangerous there. There is so much they can do at their new facilities in Webster, which is just a suburb outside of Houston. So I'll probably say Houston every time. But what an event, I was struck by how many different fire officials were there. There were firemen, there was insurance people whose specialty was fire. You would not believe the problem we have coast to coast with these battery fires. Yes, they're starting to get headlines, but regionally there's so many more headlines. The horror stories from the fire departments from Suffolk County, which is Long Island, to Washington State, there was folks from California, San Diego Fire Department, which is where Cooler's old headquarters were. There were a lot of people there. And again, the insurance companies being there is such a harbinger of good things to come for this company, Cooler, because when these mandates come down and they will come down, whether it's from property owners associations, apartment buildings, because we see these bikes are being parked outside of an apartment building, igniting the apartment building itself, so we, they talked about one, I think it was in Brooklyn, it might have been in Queens, but the family inside, and it was devastating, they mm -hmm. didn't even own this scooter. And these scooters are put in what they call juicers, the fire departments call them juicers. These are unmarked warehouses where all these scooters go, some of them because they've been thrown around, they've been thrown in the water as I've seen here in Austin, mm -hmm. they get taken back and these are unstable batteries, they're plugged in in this warehouse and in Escondido, California, the place where I'm from originally, they had a devastating fire that went on for days in one of these types of facilities, a battery storage facility. So uh, my takeaways were, it was so great to meet Ted Krupp, Will Walker, as you already told me, he's a rock star. Michael oh, yeah. Moe, we know he does such an excellent job of surrounding himself with quality people. Uh, it was a great time to really see this company, you know, proud of their achievements, uh, but still driven for the goals ahead of them. It was a great event. And, you know, speaking of those achievements, it flew under the radar. But did you see what came out for Cooler Friday at the closing bell? Mm. So IKA Worldwide released a tweet. I'll get it up on the screen here for anybody yeah. who missed it, but it was about the PYC pyrolithic carbon electrodes. And so I actually, I sent a text message over to uh, one of our contacts over at Cooler saying, hey, what is this about? There's no press release. There's no news about this. You know, IKA, they didn't really... They, they haven't really said anything, so can you give me a little insight? And so uh, let's see here. Cooler's PYC electrodes are making a substantial impact on synthetic organic electrochemistry market due to their durability, versatility, and cost effectiveness. Developed through a unique chemical vapor deposit, uh, deposition process, these electrodes demonstrate high performance in various electrochemical reactions, including Colby and Arene reductions, without requiring intensive maintenance compared to other materials like graphite or reticulated ventricus or ventrius uh, carbon rvc pyc offers better recyclability and lower over potentials in critical relation reactions excuse me in critical reactions such as hydrogen and oxygen evolution coolers pyc electrodes provide a high value solution for an industry scale application where robustness and efficiency are essential now, I understood Kevin, probably you like stuck 80 the landing on that. I got to interrupt you. You stuck the landing. You wobbled a little bit on the balance bar because I don't know that you knew the size of some of these words you were yeah, jumping no, into. But I love it. That was great.
<laughs> so yeah, that that's kind of what I'm I'm talking about here. I I understand maybe about like 80% of what he's talking about in this text message here, but I see words like cost effective, I see words like recyclability, I see words like efficiency, I see all of the bread and butter of the cooler brand. So that's the one that I'm on the hunt for right now is getting more information about this new PYC electrode. Let's talk a little bit about another new client that's G O G Y is the ticker symbol. Company name is Golden Grail Beverages corp we love their media team already we love oh, yeah. the imagery we love their what they're doing there our job is going to be targeting the investor side of things keeping people in the know attracting new investors a lot's going on with this company interim ceo we're going to speak to him this friday we're going to be recording with him so it'll be coming out early in the month of november uh scott has just come on to the company scott lomu he uh is again interim ceo he was announced about two months ago Great headline coming out of the gate for us anyways. Golden Grail announces lowers authorized common stock drop in. Uh, yeah, quite a bit, quite a bit here. Look at this, 5 billion to 5 million, excuse me, 500 million uh, shares outstanding. So again, from 5 billion to 500 million shares. That's still quite uh, a drop. Yeah, significant, significant. Mm -hmm. So Golden Grail is one we're excited to work with. Again, we've been in the beverage industry starting all the way back with Rocky Mountain High Brands, some of the cannabis CBD infused drink beverage companies that we've had throughout the 2020s, the 2010s, excuse me, the, back to the 2010s even. So oh, some we of your, know this your space, interviews you with, know uh, this space. Some of your interviews with SBEV, uh, yeah. Splash Beverage, some of my favorite content that we've ever done on the Small Cat Voice channel. Uh, yeah, and is, they went OTC SBEV. to NYSC mm -hmm. during yeah. that time period. So, and we've had we've had Cooler K U L R go to OTC. Uh, we didn't mention their NYSC now. So, mm -hmm. Golden Golden Grail, let's do it. Let's go from OTC to the NYSC. Let's get this done. So, I'm gonna wrap up talking about another one of our clients. And Bitmine Immersion is a company that. Uh, Bitmine Immersion Technologies, ticker symbol BMNR, they've had to ride the peaks and valleys of Bitcoin. And Bitcoin right now, um, if you go to the post that came out, Dateline today, October 29th, Bitcoin has surged back above $71,000 as the Fed's beige book signals a possible rate cut in November with the dollar cooling off. BMNR is well positioned to take advantage of Bitcoin coins, upward momentum, and increased mining demand. So why are we talking about that? Why are they so closely tied to that? Well, they are immersion-cooled Bitcoin mining and hosting company, and they even actually mine their own Bitcoin as well. So that's part of the business model. So we've done several videos with the CEO, Jonathan Bates. He's walked us through how the business model has evolved. I really want you to hit the press wire for this company, BMNR, see the flow of things. We are on the precipice of getting earnings from this company as well. So there's a lot to look forward to in these last couple of months, especially with the move in Bitcoin above 71,000. So I think it's a great time for you to catch up on BMNR, see some of those earlier interviews, look at the flow of news, reach out to us and give us a question about this company. Anything in closing, Kevin? Well, you know, while we're on the topic of BMNR, it hit me probably two weeks ago why I actually enjoy BMNR as opposed to a lot of the other mining companies, a lot of the other crypto plays that are out there. And it's because of the man Jonathan Bates himself. Um, you look at the crypto business and there's a lot of sketchiness involved. You know, I'm not going to point any fingers or anything like that, but there's some sketchy players involved. And then you look at somebody like Jonathan Bates and you're just like, oh, you're a guy with M&A experience, mergers and acquisitions experience. You got a finance background. You, you got all of this understanding of this technology. Like dude, dude can talk Bitcoin for probably hours and hours on end and, and walk me around like the entire facility. And I would not retain a single thing he said, but just go, wow, that sounds really intriguing. And I mean, it, every time that we have a privilege to sit down and talk with Jonathan, it's very eye opening that this company is, in my opinion, very undiscovered. Um, yeah. You don't normally have a mergers and acquisitions guy at a Bitcoin mining company. And that's always struck me as a little bit weird. But when I started looking at how crypto is evolving, how Bitcoin's evolving, you know, there's theories that it's going to get over 100K next year. We'll see that. That's pretty wild speculation. But with those types of theories, wouldn't you want to have somebody with M&A experience sitting at the helm of that company? And that's just my personal insight here with BMNR. But that's what's always been interesting about me. Watch our latest interview with Jonathan Bates and then go watch some other crypto influencer. Go watch some other crypto CEO. Watch the differences and then compare the two and just go, something's different here with BMNR. And so that's yeah, my just two cents up. on that. 
Do me a favor and flash up from the website here, bitmindtech.io. Mm -hmm. Go to our team. Look at Jonathan. The most important thing, he's a UT graduate, okay? <laughs> there you go. Hook him, buddy. And not only that, as you pointed out, 25 years at J.P. Morgan Securities. 25 years there before getting into this. He's not the only one, okay? We've talked about Lori Love and her mm -hmm. background. She's a CPA. Well, Somebody else likes accounting over here. And you're right. When we mentioned it earlier in the, I also have a degree in arts and entertainment management. So we do love music here at Small Cap Voice. But dig into Lori Love, a licensed CPA, also on the board of Clean Spark, a mm -hmm. company doing great things out there. CLSK, I believe is the ticker symbol. CLSK, Clean Spark. So anyways, Kevin, anything else before we wrap this one up? No, nah, this is always a great roundup, and I'm excited to kind of see what November brings with some of these. Uh, we got some cool stuff planned uh, in terms of some just fun engagements to do with some investors and obviously some new video content that we're going to get out there. So pretty excited for what's to come. All right. For Kevin Gray, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for tuning in. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Of course, leave us your comments below.